fun houses. Do you want to talk about who you've lured into your basement tonight? Uh, I do. I'm a little troubled that I will not be able to pull this person away from uh, the record shelf. It's so, so good. <laughs> be able to buy some time by uh, by like set by doing that uh, plan spiel you had about who the guest is and. What yeah. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> so our uh, guest tonight is a local Edmonton man who says words for money, um, Graham Moseman. Uh, hi. Your record collection is so weird. <laughs> Like, none of it makes sense, and I want all of it. Oh. It's so dumb. You can have it when I die. I mean, that's, I know, I'm sad. I just met you, and you seem lovely. And you lured me into your basement. Well, we, all have, so we all have to die someday. I was so disgusting. Yeah. Well, this show is actually um, like going to end in a fight to the death, so you better hope that he's the one to die. Oh, you actually man. inherited all of his things as like a prize for winning. I uh, yeah, I have a I have a, a bum shoulder that's held together with mashed potatoes and hope. So mm. have fun. Go for go for the shoulder. <laughs> We're not so different. I have a shoulder bum. It's uh, it's it's a bum that can articulate on like any axis. You have a articulated bum. Yeah, that's who. That's, this is why I have to be behind the desk because like it would be so distracting because people would just notice. I feel so safe in this basement full of robot ass. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no no no! It's it's all natural. You get organic robot? No, and it's just I was born this way. You know, you know that's an organic. I mean, it's like the um, the weird the weird organic spaceship people uh, from all the canceled Star Wars books. The Yuuzhan Vong. Nothing. All right. Well, cool. We're uh, hi. I've had sex before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. This is like I'm glad that we have like the same level of nerd as everyone else on the show um ian no, who's not, not me our, our gm swears that he's not a weeb but he makes an anime reference in every show that we make and our producer is a fully admitted weeb so ooh, fun mm. fun fact i used to run the uh anime section of the west edmonton mall hmv uh once oh, hell, yeah. time, i knew you ran a section of an yeah. hmv yeah it was my i didn't know anything about it speak on that um i knew what one piece was uh, and I and I had seen like yeah, it's, it's a which which piece just, that, just one just a single just one, them? Single yeah. one. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know I didn't watch it they were like ah you're overweight and probably watch a lot of TV have an anime section go no, nuts no I told you it's just the camera <laughs> oh oh no you've had, you've actually been you've had like a warp funhouse mirror in your house the whole time my god. And you've just have a credible body to smart. Wow, family. why is my self confidence so bad? That's uh, cool. I don't know. <laughs> I've only just met you. <laughs> uh, yeah, West Edmonton Mall, HMV, big fun times. I was in love mm. with the girl that ran the punk section. I was mm. 17. What a world. She That's really didn't want to find this thing? Uh, sort of. I actually didn't learn her name until I knew her for six months because mm. her the name she told people was different than her actual name. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well what was her punk name? Uh, Cat, mm, and mm -hmm. her real name was Cynthia, and that was apparently very not cool. It was. Uh... Mm. Anyway, hi. Sorry, that was me when I was like seventeen, eighteen. How's it going? I'm, Cynthia's I'm... not a very punk name. That's fair. No, yeah. Cynthia. Anyone can be a punk name. You can be as punk as you want. It has sin in it. Yeah, the, you're right. You could do like sin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no, right. no, the cat's out of the bag. They're gonna know there's somebody else on the couch. <laughs> Yeah, does that mean we have to introduce him now? Yeah, let's bring out our um, Weeb Junior, oh. Ian. I swear to God, I'm not a weeb. But maybe I am. Did you kill <laughs> the <laughs> But kill maybe itself. half the time we missed a perfect shot. Yeah, missed a perfect yeah. lyric. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> why HMB never like, fucking hired me. <laughs> Wait, why? Uh, oh, yeah, pro probably when I was like young. Yeah, and who, yeah I did. Yeah. Didn't you got a sweet shirt with a pink logo on it? What more could you ask for? I also applied for an HMB and got turned down. 
It was horrible. You missed nothing. <laughs> I mean, I ended up working at Bath and Body Works, so I, I don't think that was better. <laughs> I think that was probably worse. <laughs> I had to lotion up old ladies' hands. It was definitely worse. Ooh. That, yeah, that sounds terrible. Yeah. I, I would mean, hate that. We, plus, you got to get into the creases. You got to pull back the skin. It's like a... It's not like a wiener. You don't have to like pull back any foreskin or anything. It's just like oh. it's just regular hands. Oh, I yeah. was I was thinking of a chicken, um, mm. but you know, like a dong works too. Dogs are cool. There's, there's we always we way. always circle back to wieners. Just to <laughs> there's, all, there's really a lot of different types of skin that you have to pull back for various reasons. Let's try and list them all. Face. <laughs> you pull it back for food. Oh, uh, yep. Is that like opening your jar? Yes, <laughs> it's pulling open your face hole. That's that's true. Mm -hmm. All right, who's next? Ooh. I guess every time you look at something, you peel your eyelids apart. Or when you blink, yeah, you're peeling oh. them down. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes, like, when you have to put, like, ECG leads on someone and they have, like, they're large or just they have a lot of, like, sag in their, you know, generally if they have, like, you know, traditionally female breasts, um, you got to, like, actually lift those up and kind of, like, maybe, like, you know, hopefully they're not too sweaty, or you get kind of like boob cheese sometimes. So that, that skin you got to pull back because I mean, everyone knows that, right? Feel real boob safe cheese. in this basement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our <harvest> boob cheese. <laughs> first, the first question we ask the entire group is tell us about a time you had to pull skin off of something. So, yeah, let's maybe change the subject. Actually, yeah, let's let's go to the topic of how you, where you are at, where you're at in life that you feel comfortable walking into a stranger's basement having never met them. I mean, this is going to sound super, like, dorky and lame. Um, I find people who play tabletop roleplay games, by and large, don't suck. Um, like, I mean, just, I mean, often you see the law of averages, you're going to get, like, a shit DM, or you're going to find someone who's just kind of a goober. But for the most part... Yeah, no goobers here. Like, well, I mean, yeah, but, like, there's, there's different... There, are you, like, the... Like the Derek Fildebrandt making up stories about masks and coffee shops in Calgary kind of goober, mm. or are you just like, oh, look at that guy rolling dice, like look at look at her with her speakers and headphones. That's so cool. What a bunch of goobers. <laughs> like, there's a difference in the there's a difference in the type of goob. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the consistency, the viscosity, <laughs> the, yeah, the, the flavor that's of the goob, yeah, if you will. <laughs> Um, so I don't know, like I just, I, I've done a lot of podcasts before and usually when someone's like, Hey, do you want to come play games? I'm like, yeah. Also, do you know how long it's been since I played like tabletop role play in person? Like I just went back to Edmonton. I'm getting weird. Guys. Well, and this time you were probably also <laughs> excited because you're like, wow, this is not a podcast even. It's a, it's oh, a whole different thing. It's like, I just get the, the microphones are, yeah, live stream, totally different. Yeah. Right. Well, it's basically, it's basically what you do. It's, it's radio, you know, like it's, it's happening live. People are presumably listening to it in their cars. Um, or on a stage. Cause you told me to come from off stage and we'll be in front of a, there's many ways we can prevent that. I don't know. I'm yeah, like, podcasts don't have stages. I'm a, I'm a don't ham. I like, I like buds and microphones. It's fucking sue me. I don't know. This is, this is good. <laughs> This is a, that's actually like that's one of the reasons I was excited that you said yes because I was like this is a professional microphone talking person he can carry the whole show and we can just like yeah I just I just talk for four hours for my day job I'm, I'm like I'm getting small I'm starting but I'm like put me in character man I'll you, go nuts you talk for four hours continuously oh fuck no no our people at the AM station do I don't. I was a little concerned because I was like, does he know that they're actually like playing music for a lot of that time? Or is he just like <laughs> going off about like, well, here's what I think about the mandates and like, here's my take on Ukraine. And it's just like, you know, the fucking yeah, all, all this, all white stripes are playing and he has no idea. He has no idea of this music. <laughs> I wouldn't talk over the white stripes. I'm not a monster. No, you're talking under them. Like your mic is cut and you're just like, and furthermore, if I was in charge of Kazakhstan and like, you know. You know what? Though? During an ad, break. I have I have one hundred percent scenes. I oh, I can't even say see. I've seen kids because I've done this. Mm. I did a break the other week. Um, where you because like we're called Google breaks in radio because you have like a break in music and you say words. Mm. Uh, I did an entire break that was really not good. Like it was real. I knew once it was going into it, I was like, oh, I don't have my out. I'm getting brain jumbled. This isn't good radio. Mm. And then I realized about forty seconds in that I hit the wrong button to turn my mic on. It was. I know. I yeah. I hit the down button instead of the up button, and uh, no one heard a thing. Wow. And so I got to Thank be like, 
to hit the next song and then redo the break and make it not be garbage. Oh, wow. What was that, like a whole minute? A whole minute of a mic off. Imagining making a mistake like that. I cannot imagine. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, yeah right. Like, you definitely haven't done entire episodes like that. Like, that would just be crazy. Hmm. Yep. So here's I have actual questions about radio. We can yeah, get sure. we can beg back to being stupid, but I'm very interested because so like because you're you're not like uh Chuck is not an independent station, right? It's it's on chorus. Yeah, yeah, we're on we're we're part of the chorus radio network. Right. Um which is not owned by Shaw. That's something that like right wing loonies like to throw at us, being like, Yeah, you're just owned by Shaw. Yeah, we're not. Don't they we're corporations? Well, well we're sort of we're sort of incestuous between the teeth. Like people are on the boards of the of Shaw and Chorus that are on the boards for both. Mm -hmm. We are technically separate companies. Right. Is that like a conspiracy theory that like oh you're owned by Shaw? So but like what's the conspiracy there then? Like is Shaw um, like Um you know what? Depending on who's texting in, uh the word Soros will come up a lot. Mm. And globalists. So oh, right. Soros. Really I forgot that he's evil. <laughs> I keep forgetting these things. Yeah, oh man, I get I get my talking points from Daddy George. He just texts me every morning. Here's what to say about communism. People really like overvalue the the like impact of local shit. Like I've seen like this is kind of going in a different political direction, but I remember people on I think it was like the Alberta subreddit saying like I don't know something happened. The UCB did something, and they're like, "Yeah, man, follow the money. This is Russian dark money." And I'm like, nobody cares. <laughs> Not a single person in another foreign care country cares about like the Alberta school curriculum. None. Okay, Sorry. Quick, 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 quick side note, not to go all like really really into it, man. But like, have you noticed how less trolly Twitter is since people just shut the internet off from Russia? Like, uh, think about your feeds and how much less crummy and troll filled it is. I don't know. I just hang out in like little Discord communities oh, now. I'm even more holed off. That sounds lovely. It's Wait. so good. I, it's yeah, I don't have to. Okay. Agree. All right, all right, cool. It's just uh, it's the weirdest. This guy goes outside and like touches grass. It's fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, it's nutritious. That's great. That's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, people will believe that because he looks like a guy that goes outside, but he's actually mostly playing uh, a company of heroes. A great That's game, the though. Second one, yeah. Great game, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, radio. What? Um, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean. Maybe you can't get into certain specifics, but like, so working for a chorus, like, to what extent, like, can you pick songs that play ever, or is it like full program director? Like, here's your list. Uh, that's a, okay. That's a really good question. So, um, our format is called in the bills. It's called classic hits. So, yeah. can you wait? Can you give me the whole explanation in that? The bills. Yeah. Okay. Please. So, in the bills, we're known as the classic hits format, and that's the best from the seventies, eighties, nineties, and today. And surely we could go off and play the greatest. This is really hard on my throat. I'm not going cool. <laughs> <laughs> right now. I can't tell what he's saying at all. Um, I think we got the gist. People yeah, got yeah. yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll, so, we'll, we'll You can do your tabletop character voice in that. You can do you your tabletop character in that voice the whole time, and we'll, we'll save that. I, I was planning to give him a Russian accent, and that's just not cool now. So, well, ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, the. The that was we're fine. I've had a long day. That's okay. You can't okay. Have, I have already. <laughs> this is great. There's there's still just no dead air with you. You're a real pro. <laughs> um, yeah. So so we. It's not like we're given a list of songs to play. Like we as the programming staff, because I'm also the music director for the radio station. So we as a programming staff kind of sit down, look at our mentor stations and the most successful stations in our format, literally see what they're playing, kind of extrapolate that based on our own local testing of what does well. Shocker, it'll always be Jack and Diane. If you're ever wondering what the number one song is on Classic Hits Radio forever, it's Jack and Diane. Oh, I believe it. It's a classic um, song. It's a good song. I'm really happy because I just won a tiny victory because one of our top played songs was Toto's Africa, and I finally got <sighs> that bumped down by a category. So we're hearing it slightly less, and I take that as a fucking victory because I can't take that song. If I call <laughs> him and request it, do you have to play it? Just asking uh, for a friend. I don't have to play it, but depend if it if it's good, I might. And if you're not a dick, I probably will. Okay, I'm not uh, a dick. If I called in and requested Jack and Diane, would you play it? Absolutely. Well, because we're going to play it in an hour and a half anyway, so we will <laughs> well get it over with. Um, yeah, it's, it's, so radio is so weird because, like, it's not, 
Like there's a thousand places to, again, there's a thousand places to get Jack and Diane or, 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 or the hip or whatever, like pick whatever your song is. There's a thousand places to get it. So the thing that's going to, that's keeping radio relevant in my mind. Um, and you know, ratings wise, this is sort of kind of shown to prove is, is personalities and the people talking between the songs and the attitude of your, of your radio station and the kind of brand you're trying to cultivate. So yeah, because you can get music anywhere. Who gives a shit? Like the music's whatever. Um, you got to get the right music mix proper so you can hopefully keep people around when they're kind of listening. When you're a background thing uh, or a background noise, which is you know what radio still is, um, always has been. And then having good personalities and good people through the microphone to kind of keep people around is is I think what will keep people going and keep radio going. Um, whether that's whether that's being delivered terrestrially or being delivered digitally, whatever, um, people still crave like a local a local person, um, and and having some kind of local content. So oh yeah, I've craved a lot of local people, but I've craved foreign people too. There's a lot of foreign people in my area. <laughs> like in your ad recommendations? Yeah, yeah, lots of like uh, Russian ladies. Um, Nilfs, particularly, mm. they're always in my area. Yeah, I thought you were starting to but... sound like my grandparents. They're just saying there's a lot of foreign people in my area because I get that yeah. every time I go over. They list. They're like, there's people from this place and this place and this place, and they're just yeah. Like, How do you know? They don't. <laughs> they don't. You, That's the trick. Why are you, why are you writing this down? <laughs> They, that's the trick is they don't actually know they just know the names of three countries and they know like the skin general skin tone of the people from those countries and so then they see someone with that skin tone they just assume that they're from, from one of those three countries and then they make a little tick in their notebook yeah so like the three countries i assume are like china mexico and <laughs> africa <laughs> <laughs> that's about it yeah maybe something for the middle east i don't know i guess that's four yeah that's fair so, so yes, so like, like so <laughs> yes, so, yeah. I feel like so that, middle, I, that research though. Sorry, Nicole, I'm talking over you. That's okay. I'm used to it. <laughs> so, I feel like the Middle East just get like if anyone from like Middle East or any of those countries just gets looped in with Mexico. So it's true. <laughs> oh boy, the, the Middle East would happen. Though. The Middle East is the Mexico of Europe, is it not? <laughs> yeah, just ask my grandparents. No. Middle East. I think it's its own. There are, wow, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a college Let's dropout. Just throw away the whole suitcase. <laughs> Wait, can you say it one more time? I'm trying to unpack it mentally. No, you just said throw away the whole suitcase. Yeah, yeah. do I have to? Yeah. Damn. So, Mexico, <laughs> Mexico is. The... My question was that research that is being done of like, well, how do we retain listeners? Like, do they ever field test? Like, what if we let the host slash DJ like just curate the entire four hours of music? Like, what if we did that? Have they tried it? Uh, yeah, it's college radio and it sucks. Uh, I, like it. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, from a commercial standpoint, like, yeah, I'm not, you know, my, 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 I'm not here to be like, I'm breaking records, man. I'm yeah. changing the world. I'm here to hopefully help you get informed about something that's happening in Edmonton laugh about something and make fun of Derek Fildebrandt. Like no one smiled when you took off your fucking mask, Derek. Tell us how you really feel. Oh, okay, can you I can someone tell me what this tweet was? Cause I okay. am totally in the dark here. Up on screen. Uh there is a way. I don't know it's, if uh, Josh is familiar with it, but we're about to find out if he knows how to put tweets up on screen. Um but yeah while we're at it let's just yeah. keep rolling. While we're at it, who's Derek Hildebrand? Like is oh. he in He's just, yeah. he's like this guy that was like formerly deep into like Alberta right wing politics. And uh -oh. now he runs a shitty newspaper. Deep in as in like he was like running for something or he was like, or he just talks. I think he was deputy leader of, of one of the right wing parties. He did, he was pretty, yeah, he's a something. He was the leader of the Freedom Conservative Party, I think. That sounds right. Anyway, it's also Josh's job to fact check. Yeah, he uh, he he put up this tweet today. It's like today, I walked into a downtown Calgary cafe, maskless. As I walked in, other people looked at me, took off their masks, and smiled. Hashtag Amy Ledge. And I was that like, sounds, sure. That sounds real. Yeah, like sure, sure. Definitely happen. And then and then they were having babies. 
and you saw one of the babies and the baby looked at you? Sure, Derek. And then the baby so, thanked him for saving its freedom and its future. And then the barista behind the till fell in love with them and they got married and had little freedom, babe. I'm just, I'm fine. Oh. <laughs> I had all day. I'm so mm. grumpy about it. I'm sorry. He walked out of the cafe and everyone on the street stopped and started applauding. Slow applause that built. It was beautiful. It was yeah. a we got out of the cars. <laughs> and a band so came around, marching around the corner and started playing the American anthem. <laughs> Uh, what, what's the the Brooks anthem? Does Brooks have an anthem? What? Brooks, Alberta? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I think the guy's from Brooks. Oh, oh. I don't do know, towns the, usually have anthems? No, I don't know. The Brooks, uh, oh, here it is. God, it's so good. Oh, <laughs> nice, oh. Profile, nice profile photo. Is this a time traveler? <laughs> <laughs> New from the Civil yeah, War. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say he kind of looks he like he even looks like a douchebag, but then I was like kind of looking at him. And I was like he kind of looks like how Ian would look if he wore a suit. So <laughs> I take <laughs> back that know. comment that I never made. <laughs> you will never see that, and you never ever <laughs> never happened, and never will. Mm -hmm. He's kind of got the like like right wing Chud militia haircut going, and he's wearing camo. Yeah, pants. camo and yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, he was really, I saw him walk up and he just went straight to the basement. I was like, oh, that that's like looks like a man who knows where a basement is. And so I kind of that's how I that's 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 how I knew I was. I like at the, right the point that you opened the door and the only way you to go was downstairs. You were still wondering where is the basement? <laughs> <laughs> Which direction could it be? I've been standing here for 0. 0.4 seconds and it's still just <laughs> baffles me. Yeah. Hey, basement, I live in a condo, okay? I have everything handed to me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a simple existence. Mr. Fat Cat, he's got a condo. <laughs> Place for my dog to sleep. That's good. Ooh, you got a dog? I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, refused to bring the dog on request. Well, I just... I, I, you, I, okay, to be fair, you're a stranger, and it's your basement, and he's willing to sacrifice himself, but he's not willing to sacrifice his dog, and I totally yeah. understand that mentality. Yeah. Actually, very admirable. So Me, wait, I mean, if I murder you in the basement, who is going to take care of the dog? Do you make a plan for that? Uh, you know what? My girlfriend has the keys to my place, and so I actually also told her what the address was and how long I thought I'd be here. So oh, you weren't doing a bit with this next thing. <laughs> oh, oh fuck! That's, those are words I said, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I definitely told. I was like, "Hey, I'm here." Actually, she lives like a few blocks away. So oh, we're very close by. He's well, speak on that. How's the girlfriend? How's the sex? I was. <laughs> Describe the coital arrangement. You know how does it work? I mean, yeah. what frequency is the sex the thing that happens before or after the crying? Uh, that I th oh, I thought it was like a sandwich. Like, yeah, like, I don't I mean, ask anyone here like any of us would know because yeah, I don't know. Really asking for of, advice. There's a lot of weeping and it's cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone has their own way of mixing sex and crying, and that's the beautiful thing about it is like it's 2022. You can do it however you want. Because I do the opposite of what he does. I do the inverse sandwich where it's sex, crying, and more sex. Mm -hmm. That sounds hard on your tear ducts. Well, <laughs> there's only so wait, much. There's so much cry fluid in the day. There's, yeah, and then you got to refuel. Uh, yeah, there's a yeah, I know. I'm saying that's less. Yeah, no, it's, it's like Diablo 2. Like you can only cast cry so many times before the skeletons get you. <laughs> there's a there's exactly a, like that. There's a limit. <laughs> that's that's yeah, but, but that's what I'm saying is his way has twice the crying. My way has twice the sex. Uh, yeah, an activity yeah. in which you famously lose no fluid. <laughs> it's low steel. Those are uh, those those things are going on the stream, right? Those oh, yeah. little pop-ups. Okay, like, good. Those are, they're great. They're That's wonderful. a true story. One of these two, uh, the two people that are watching our stream, is probably my partner. And yes, can confirm he does love Diablo. A Diablo super. I mean, Diablo still holds up. What a great game that is. God damn. Yeah. It's on the you take it wherever you want. Yeah. I just played through it for the first time. It was wonderful. Cutscenes are pretty neat. And so we've covered video games. We've covered anime. Uh, anime. Do we have anime? any other? Animoy, yeah. Animoy. <laughs> Animoy is uh, it's it's like anime, um, except it's. I love watching the joke cogs turn. Yeah, and they're grinding. They are just just jamming bits together, and I'm not. They're not putting together, and I'm just waiting. Just. I mean, there's there's not really a lot of good like oi sounds to kind of make puns or portmanteaus out of. Ozzy, 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 oi, oi, oi. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Animoy is like kind of like anime, but like more like softcore porn, and it makes me anim moist. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only oi sound I could come with. I'm sorry, uh, come yeah, up so with. This is why I didn't. I don't want to hog all the jokes, and I just knew that like <laughs> um, that Nicole was winding up with like the Happy Gilmore golf swing to just like hit that one off the tee. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm so generous. I'm so happy I'm here. What a joy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, don't worry. We'll make you regret it soon enough. <laughs> I, brought my, I brought my own dice. Come on, man. It sounds like a great time for a jarring tonal shift. What do you think, Nicole? Yeah. Not my favorite uh, kind of tone. You... Let's talk about alcoholism. Oh, cool. Oh. Let's go. That's like my favorite thing. Hell yeah. This isn't a bit. I genuinely really enjoy talking about <laughs> alcoholism. It's great. Go. Great. Your favorite part of it. Oh, because me, I'm the drunk. Yeah, cool. Well, um, we all are, but you're the only one who put it on Twitter, so. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it was so, like, my alcoholism is kind of weird. Like, I, um, because to be honest, it's always really been public. Um, because, like, the last day I drank. Yeah, I did... some of my alcoholism has been very public. <laughs> Go on. Well, yeah, so, like, the last, you know, I'll, you'll level with you, like, the last six months of my drinking time. Um, the vast majority of it was on air at my job. Um, you know, I was working at X99 in Calgary. Um, worked there for, you know, five years. Because you you call you're in Calgary, right? Yep, I listen to X929. Yeah, you, I've, did you ever hear the old show? Maybe? Um, how long ago was that? Like, uh, I was there from 2014 to 2019. Uh, yeah, Possibly. Prop see, sorry, that was like, do you know me? That was the fucking worst. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but like just you know, for, for context, so like Nicole, you can kind of back this up. Like X as a station is very like it's very friendly and very, very human. Like it tries really hard to like let the announcers do whatever. Yeah. Um, and like I took that to the extreme while also being a raging alcoholic. So for like those last six months, like I was drunk on air most nights. Um, cause I was just fucking miserable. I didn't like anything really. Um, and you know, like I had other kind of anime. Other, other anime and Cynthia. Oof. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it all kind of came, you know, kind of came crashing down. Cause I, I remember it was the night that the Raptors won their championship. Uh, I, uh, I was hosting an event for a friend of mine. Um, and there was like this after party and I, the, the event ended at three. My show started at six. I remember the event ending. I remember going to the after party and then everything's just gone. And I got blackout at like five o'clock on a Thursday afternoon. Um, went to work. I have vague memories of doing the show. Um, I don't know how I got home. To be honest, I, th I think I may have gotten an Uber or something. I'm not super sure. That's responsible. You know, I, I, just, I, looked at, I just looked at my receipts and I had like beer delivered to the station and I had an Uber receipt. So I was like, put those two together. Um, and then, yeah, the next morning I was on my way to my therapist's office and um, I get a text from my coworker being like, hey, are, were you drunk on air last night? And I was like, no, I'd never do that. My head hurts and I threw up already today, but I wasn't drunk on air. Um, and yeah, I, I was sitting at the, um, at an intersection. We had this thing where you can like pull up your, your, your show from your phone. And I pulled up one of the breaks, uh, that I did, uh, and I couldn't listen to it. I still haven't listened to it. Um, but I saw that it was three and a half minutes long. Um, and my longest breaks were usually like a minute tops, maybe 90 seconds. So I was like, yeah, oh, you, I was very drunk on air last night. So I, I was really lucky because I'm on my way to my therapist's office anyway. And so I get to my therapist's office. I'm seeing her for like four years um, at the time. And I just like broke down. I was like, I think I'm a drunk. I was drunk at work. I've been drunk at work a lot, all the time. Um, so you didn't get in trouble with work. You just like. Oh, no, no. I, I, I got another text from my boss while I was in therapy being like, hey, you need to come to the station now. We need to talk. And so I go from therapy to my boss's office. I fucking break down being like, yep, hey, I'm not coming to work today. I don't know if I'm coming to work next week. I got to go find a rehab center. I got to go figure my shit out. And I got to not be a, a drunk mess. Um, and apparently saying that like, hey, I'm not coming to work and I need to go get help. 
uh, I have I have found out after the fact that probably saved my job. Um, because if I had been obstinate or fought it or or whatever, I probably would have been I would have been fired with cause. For sure. So you know, for me, my alcoholism has always always been really public. Um, I because I was gone, I got suspended for a few weeks and the audience didn't was curious as to where I went. And a few people had been like, had noticed and like wrote on the Facebook page, like Graham sounded pretty drunk. And then he was gone for a few weeks. What's going on? So, um, yeah, I kept everything kind of under wraps until like a year later. Um, after I got, had been sober for a year, uh, I did a video on, on the X99 page saying, Hey, like I've just hit one year sobriety a year ago. I was drunk as fuck on air. <laughs> And um, here's what happened. And so that was in, uh, I hit, well, I was at one year sober in 2020 of June. And so like early pandemic, everyone's still like scared. And um, I lost my job a week later from a COVID layoff, which just sucks. That's how the business goes. COVID um, layoffs for radio? Oh yeah. 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 Cause the station went from making, you know, nine, $10 million a year to zero. Because every advertiser pulled pulled their advertising. Oh, because they lost money. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. You never think about like how the like oh. thing just all moves down the chain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then it got me. So and and you know that was really hard. But you know after that, like I had I I got into recovery and um stayed sober and haven't had a haven't had a relapse, which is pretty cool. So. I was checking my app the other day. I think in like nine days I'll have been sober for a thousand, which is pretty cool. Oh, it's pretty exciting. Do you have an oh, app? Oh, really? yeah, yeah, I have a sobriety app that that I uh, that I There's use. There's an app for fucking everything. That's awesome. Oh, it's great. Oh man, I have apps to find like different recovery speakers. Um, because like so I'm we're you know right on the that's I am so we're not on on TV, radio, or films. So I'm I'm I go to AA. Um, and there's like different apps you can like connect to meetings or go connect to, um, different AA speakers. And like, that's just what's worked for me. Um, I am not one of the addicts. That's like, I know people in AA that are like, Hey, is the only way to make it work. I don't think that's true. I think that's a fallacy. Um, AA yeah, works, great. AA works great for me, but it might not work for everyone else. And that's cool. Like if you want to get sober, I think there's a way to do it. That's not within this structure, but this structure has just worked for me. So, um, yeah, I mean, even like since then I've, I've, you know, I've, I've done talks at school assemblies on mental health. I've been a, a men I didn't counter. I was a mental health public speaker for a long time. Uh, I would go out to schools with counter board of education and talk about my mental health. Cause I was a depressed sack of shit for a long time and still kind of am. Um, so yeah, like talking about mental health and talking about anxiety or depression or whatever has always been like a thing I've done. And then when it was super apparent that I was a drunk, it was just easy to kind of keep going like that. So hmm. um, you asked earlier, sorry, I've kind of rambled. What do I like about being an alcoholic and being drunk? <laughs> well, um, did you, I guess. Um, everything. It's great. Oh, like yeah. I have, I don't, <laughs> like I, I have a more clarity of where my fuck ups are as a person. Right. And I have clarity of where I can go wrong. And when I know that I am, I'm, 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 I'm falling into addictive behaviors and, and how to get myself out of them and the people I can reach out to if I want to. And I have a structure in which I can kind of live my life and structure my life that I won't be a, that I won't be a drunk piece of shit. I'll just be a regular piece of shit who's sober, uh, <laughs> which is cool. Oh and, yeah. You're absolutely in good company here. And like, also I never, I don't get hangovers and that's cool. Like, Oh my God. Being like again, you have to understand for someone who drank like every day for years, like waking up and like having a functioning brain, like you know, God willing, I'll make it to to three years sober in June. But like that still blows my mind when I like wake up on a Saturday and be like, "Fuck, I can take my dog to the park and not throw up." This rule. Yeah, you can find new and unique ways to feel awful, like reading Derek Hilderman. I mean, I mean, I feel awful, but then I make fun of them and I feel better. No, I'm like the eat two sausage and egg muffins and tell myself it's because I'm busy. Uh, I feel like that kind of piece of shit. 
this is going back a tiny bit, but right before you brought up AA, you said, well, this isn't radio, TV, or film. Is there like a clause that's yeah, like, literally. like wrote in a typewriter before? They're like, no radio, TV, or film. And literally. you're like, loophole, loophole. Literally, you like, show it to them when they get mad at you. Like, <laughs> don't say anything about weird live streams. <laughs> literally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's these things called the you know, your 12 steps. Yeah. Uh, and then your 12 traditions. Yeah. And tradition six, I want to say. Um, is maintain personal anonymity at the level of press, radio, and films. Yeah, I know. I know that's their rule. I'm just think. I think it's very interesting that you're like, well, fuck it. <laughs> I don't care about the spirit of the rule. I will talk the shit out of this. On, I mean, to be fair, no one will ever see this. But I, well, you know what though? There's there's other people that very much fully violate, like violate that spirit, and mm. you know, um, like oh, Dax Shepard from his, you know, one of the Bjorn experts, one of the biggest podcasts on the planet. Like they make like. Eight ten million dollars a year, yeah. and he's like, "Yep, I'm an AA. They say you're not supposed to be open like that, but uh, press, radio, and film, baby." Um, and like the dude had, so that's just one example. I'm not you know, casting a judgment on on that, um, but I mean, I've also been caught. Like I've talked about, you know, I've talked to, there, I've talked about being an alcoholic on the radio before, and like certain language I've used and certain phrases I've said. I had someone call and be like, hey, "Are you a?" Are you an AA? And I'm like, ah, oh, but what did I say? What did I say? <laughs> and so, like, I've been caught before. Um, but like anyone who knows me, I'm really upfront and frank about it. Um, you know, even if I've been, I am at like a wedding or something, and someone's like, hey, you're not drinking. What's going on? I was like, oh, ah, turns out I'm really good at drinking. Like, I'm really good at it. And I had to stop. Yeah, I didn't want to embarrass everyone, to show them up, be like, oh. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers want to see a blackout. Let's go. Uh, so yeah, like I've been caught before, but like, I don't know. I, I, I'm of the belief that like, at least my family all knows I'm in AA. My friends all do. Um, you know, part of the program is very much, um, you know, the 12th step is, is having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps. We, um, pledge to practice these principles, um, in all of our affairs and, you know, take the message to the alcoholic who still suffers. Right. So, um, it's built into the program to like be there for, for you to be there for other people. And, and it, I've lucked out because I've had moments where, you know, people have been like, Hey, I think I might have a drinking problem. And I'm like, Oh, are you, are you like drinking and driving to work a lot? Like, yeah. I was like, Oh, do you, are you, do you drink and can't stop? Um, uh, most of the time. And I'm like, well, well, mm. probably a problem. <laughs> Sounds like it. Um, you know, where I, I feel I feel kind of bad because I have some friends who have a very healthy relationship with alcohol, and they'll be like, "Oh, I went on this like kind of you know bender the other day," and then like kind of give me the side eye, and like waiting to see if I'm like gonna judge them or something, or if I think that they're drunk. Um, and I'm like, I don't know. You you said that happened a week ago, and you haven't drank since, and you seem you seem pretty fucking normal to me. Like when my benders end, I start another one. <laughs> well, you gotta keep your own <laughs> you mind. Yeah, obviously, right. So yeah, and it's it's so funny because uh, yeah, everyone has their own, you know, different relationship with like the trauma around alcoholism. Like you know, knowing a legit alcoholic is really fucking sad. It sucks. Like a practicing alcoholic, there's a few things more depressing. Because because <laughs> we're fucked up. <laughs> I like how it's like presented as like a skill. I just I, got, I just got <laughs> I, like I'm better at it than you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe I don't know. I don't know everyone in this room. I just know I was really good at it. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> that, that wasn't the challenge. No. <laughs> but do you want to give me some tips? Like, oh, Ian, do you want to get me a beer, and then we'll just you can, you can, get some, you can walk me through the process. And just um, you know that we're really going to challenge you on that thousand days thing. Deal, like we will break you tonight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will be strangers. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, oh man, he talked about it in the podcast. We're gonna get him. And they, like, <laughs> yeah. We're the counter AA. Yeah, group. they paid us to yeah. be like, yeah, go fuck him up. Yeah. <laughs> How dare he? So, um, instead of Alcoholics Anonymous, we we are alcoholics and we are anonymous. We yeah. work in the shadows. <laughs> alcoholics, <laughs> comma, anonymous. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, that's already what it is. <laughs> Never mind. Oh uh, man, I don't know. It's cool. I like it. Um, I mean, I I I'd probably be dead to be honest. Not to get really dark with it, I'd be dead. If I didn't quit drinking by now. Mm. Like I drank and drank a lot. <laughs> like a lot. It's an expensive hobby too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, I used to have a problem with like drugs a lot more. So that was 
but it's I would, a more expensive hobby. Yeah, well, well, it can depends, be. Depends, depends. Well, because yeah. we were joking earlier. It was like, oh, you just came down to a strange person's basement and we're okay with it. It was like, when I was in Winnipeg, I was very into cocaine. And one guy was like, hey, man, you want to come here like my underground record? And I'm like, looking at the address. I was like, that's a really dangerous neighborhood. Sure. That sounds fun. Because <laughs> like I had done coke with this guy at a party before. So I was like, man, maybe there'll be more He's with cool. that game club. <laughs> Uh, the, I've been in some spring. I've, I've been in some weird people's houses at like five a.m. But you know, well, I'm not the one we're talking about here. So ah, that's you know. cool. I mean, it's cool. You seem pretty normal. It's it's fine. This is actually this <laughs> can't be that all that bad. I mean, I, I was just gonna say that's that's how Kelly and I met. Basically, I met him at a festival, and he was like, "Hey, do you want to hang out? I have some drugs in my tent," and I was like. What? Whoa. <laughs> that's, that's how I met you, too. What festival? <laughs> First off, uh, according, uh, <laughs> according to Nicole... The first time we met was in like university in a French class. Okay, you sorry. Know. Let me let me clarify. When I say the first, when I say when I met Kelly, I mean the first time he remembered meeting me because the first okay. three times he did not. Go on. You know what? That doesn't sound like something I would have done. Uh, I'm talking about the. Uh, you know, immediately saying he and I have substances because, uh, you know, if my grandma's watching, I've never heard of substances. <laughs> and I uh, I was in charge of the harm reduction there, so there's no way I was doing anything uh, silly. Yeah, of course. The, the answer to That's question not is, when I met you. You were wearing stuffed animal pants. <laughs> uh, those are good pants. I had to get yeah. them away when I, anyway. Uh, yeah, the answer to the question, that was uh, Rainbow Fiddle, a, a festival that was fun until they fucked up and like couldn't give everyone to their deposits back. But mm, ah, The joy of the small festival. Mm. The joy of the small festival. Yeah, it turns out hippies are not amazing at logistics. No, they're not. Hippies and commies, actually, both are really... <laughs> gen Sorry, I was at a thing with commies this weekend, so I may have commies on the mind. Mm, they're generally bad at logistics. Mind. Excuse me. What? Sorry, what sort of thing were you at with commies? Oh, it was just like it was a it was a public also, safety. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, they were like they were like, hey, how's it going? I was like, we're from the Communist Party of Alberta, and I was like, oh, are you commies? They were like Trotskyites. I was like, that's cool. That's fair. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, no, they were they were pretty good. They were pretty. Uh, they were lovely. They were really sweet. No, it was a um. So I, I have some activist friends, and there was this event um that was kind of like a community harm reduction event. We did like naloxone training um you know had discussions on like how to deal if you have like really intense convoy people in your life like how mm. to talk to them and so it was really just like a kind of a community event like a little blog party we had how to know uh, if someone is following you with an ice axe uh like if they're trotsky as they should you know should have learned this by now <laughs> uh and then yeah there was just happened to be some alberta commies mm. that were they were really lovely Okay, if asking you for a friend, what do you say to someone if they're like intense convoy people in your life? Uh, Dad, I can't talk right now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true, my dad. I don't know what my dad believes. It's probably better that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're Graham's dad, call into the show. and we'll, uh... <laughs> Oh, I love I'm Gary. Like we can't do chat. that to him. I love Gary. We can't do that to him. Um, I don't know. I just be like, that's a cool opinion you have. Do you want to play Dungeons and Dragons? Like, I, I just, I'm, I'm running out of options. <laughs> yeah, just de-escalate de the intensity of the conversation. Pro well, yeah, because we had to want to talk about it, and you don't have to. Well, we, I mean, you know, there was a guy that came by the event this weekend, and he was like, he had a sign that was like, Canadians voting for Trudeau is like a, like a, like, like a chicken voting for Colonel Sanders. And it was like, okay. Oh, okay and like talk to him for like 10 minutes he was really lovely he just kind of wanted to yell about the government what a great metaphor like he didn't go for like it's like sheep voting for a wolf like no chick i like that that chicken was good it was good i was, good. I was, it, was, it, was it was pretty good but yeah. like he just i think ultimately most of them just want to bitch about the government yeah fine. i think you're right uh, yeah. i get bitching fine. about the government i'm i'm totally down for that it's so much fun yeah you guys can just unite on that and then that's the thing, right? And that's like, I mean, I mean, I used to write some pretty when I was writing DM, like writing games as a kid, um, for like homebrews. I wanted a DM. Like most of them were about overthrowing, overthrowing something or other. So yeah, that is like every like fantasy novel ever written as well. It's like there's an evil government. We got to get rid of them. They're oppressing better, us. Better fuck them up. So yeah, no, just just start start the conversation with board games and you'll be fine. Yeah. 
thinking of like a, a D and D campaign now where you're like a Canadian trucker and you're like, okay, you, you, <laughs> so I was, you was talking to my girlfriend the other week and I was throwing out different ideas for characters. One of them was genuinely, wow, what, what would happen if like the merchants guild all simultaneously rose up and you just broke the economy oh, yeah. of your D and D world? Like, how would your characters manage this? Yeah, I was that, like, that, that actually sounds like a lot of fun. I would 100% play that game. Yeah, that would be very fun. Yeah. 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 Sorry, what was the premise? I was uh, getting yelled at about my microphone. What? Oh, like if if you were in like a, you know, kind of your standard fantasy D&D world, or even if you want to go like, I really love Eberron as a D&D setting, if you were to go like kind of steampunk and cool with it, what would happen if like the entire economy of your world was just like, well, fuck that. We're going to go march to the castle of the center of your country. Like what would happen? How do you, if you, you have no merchants everywhere, they're all gone. They've taken up their caravans and moved. <laughs> Like oh, the, like a little horse and buggy convoy to yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, like that'd freedom be, convoy. That'd be a genuinely fun game to yeah. play just to figure out the end game. Or is that just me as a DM? No, no, I, I, I love that. that. I was thinking about it too. <laughs> it's like there'd be like no NPCs to interact with. You like you go to the tavern and no one's there. Yeah, what what do you do? Like, yeah. what do you? How do you Twilight Zone D and D? Yeah, that sounds cool. I want to play that game. Yeah, totally. You just have to like read notes and like little things that they leave around. And just, like, <laughs> like, freedom, like, like an audio log in Outlast. Yeah, 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 <laughs> or like. Uh, Fallout 76 or whatever. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'd play that game. Yeah. Sorry not to derail your thing again. <laughs> no, that, you, that was the... You answered my question. Um, I mean, I, our, our, all of our settings are like far, far dumber than that. You know, like, that, that sounds really, like, high-minded. Ours are, like, what if you were Power Rangers in Atlantis, but... That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so fun. Well, you missed out on that one. I you get, you get to play the pet one. Yeah. I hey man, I've already put like half a character together, so I'm stoked. I'm I'm down. Sweet. Nice. All right. Um I mean that was too early to segue to the game. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Talk sorry. more about uh I don't know. Um something about role playing. Go. Uh I do a break, you know. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna go refill my water. Let's hear one of those famous breaks. Yeah, I'm gonna leave too. <laughs> uh, well, hey, it's 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 seven fifteen past the hour here on your internet dial. Well, boy, look out for potholes. There's a lot of them. Oh no! Uh, wow, those Oilers, they sure suck. Um, Listen, if this was the radio, I would tune in every day. <laughs> oh hell yeah, hell yeah. I mean, I do, I do have a bit on my show um, called uh, called the Heckle Thing, where I shout really specific and really kind of meaningless heckles at whatever team we're playing. Oh yeah, so you're just like you just you smell bad and no, it'll, and it'll, your mother. Oh uh, uh, no, more specific. Like, well, because you're playing Philadelphia, and I was like, hey, Philadelphia. The only cool thing about your city is the Liberty Bell, and you broke it. It's got a crack in it. I've learned that from National Treasure too. Like <laughs> well, one bridge having city, you know? Yeah. Do they have more than? Oh, there was like a famous Bill Burr rant where they were like booing him on stage, and he just kept he just kept like swearing oh, right, the whole time. Right, 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 right. Fucking one bridge having city. I was like, I was like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's all it's all dumb. Like if it was San Jose, I'd be like, ah, the best thing about your city is the Museum of Innovation. How about you innovate a better museum? Ah. I don't know, I'm doing it like Jerry Seinfeld now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> it's San the Jose. There's lots of Jose. It's not San Zid at all. <laughs> <laughs> not San Jose. <laughs> yeah, that's the bit. That's the thing I do on my. That's the thing that people pay me to do. So if we if we name a city, will you shit talk it? Oh hell yeah, uh, Paris. Oh, look at you, Paris. All your buildings are short so you can see your tower. Maybe <laughs> maybe make your tower better than a triangle, you losers with your fucking surrender monkeys. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, devastating. <laughs> uh, okay, do uh, Hamburg. Uh, Hamburg, you sound like the world's third worst meat. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I have jobs. How about, uh, I want you to shit talk Kiev, Ukraine. That's a trap. That's a trap. Don't do it. No, no. In, in traditional Ukrainian, your city is pronounced Kiev. Why don't we all know that? Mark it better. Oh, I'm sorry about the war. <laughs> it's always good when your shit talk ends with an apology. Yeah, it's the Kiev. Kiev. 
it's it's two syllables, not one. I uh because I posted I I did a I did a Instagram reel about this and how not to call it Kiev. Yeah, call no, it Kiev. I don't know. And then I had a friend text me, she's like, yo, yo, dude, it's I, I speak Ukrainian. It's Kiev. And I was like, oh, two syllables. Fuck. Yeah, like key, like, and then the iv. You had an I in there, and I was like, you got it. No, is... you, you, it's, I can't speak Ukrainian, man. <laughs> I'm, because I was doing it correctly. I have the body of a, of a, no, the, even the correct way is incorrect, apparently. According to my, she did Ukrainian dance. I'll All trust right. her. Got the, that does seal the deal. Yeah. Yeah. With the, with the shoes. Yeah. What do I know? I was learning Russian. I'm part of the problem. <laughs> I'd like to draw your attention to this comment here. We could be famous if we bought bought followers, primes, and viewers. Hell yeah. Um, you know, I wouldn't trust it if it wasn't for that Z in there. Tell you, <laughs> tell you know it's legit. Yeah, they know marketing. So wait, is this somebody commenting on our Twitch stream right now? Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's an old one. Uh, yeah, it's gone now. I think. Oh no, I wanted them to call into the show. Well, shout out to whoever was was playing the remake of Diablo too. Hell yeah! Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's my partner. <laughs> uh, our, our two biggest fans in the whole world are Nicole's partner and uh, me having the stream up to monitor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, they're dedicated fans. You know, it's a small <laughs> fan base you want to build. So, like, I threw this out of my Twitter a little while ago because. Uh, I was like, hey, hey guys, like, what do you want us to do? I'm like, do you want more stuff from my radio show? Do you want me to make more stupid jokes? Do you want me to fuck off and stop asking? And I was like, hey, what kind of content do you want to see? Like, just from my feed. And I was blown away because the number one thing that got voted up was Dungeons and Dragons stuff. And I was secretly hoping that it would be start a Twitch stream so I could just like play Baldur's Gate for hours on online and call that content. And I was a little disappointed. It was like the fourth, le the fourth most requested thing. So what you're saying is, your your fans, what the people want is more role playing. Yeah. So like, what you need is a platform through which you can like DM role playing games on a stream. Did I just play myself or why I came into this basement? <laughs> yes, you're getting you're about to get trapped. <laughs> Ah, that's cool. I got coffee. I can, I can only like I can only convince these two to like I only have so much dirt on them. It's hard to maintain the like excuses to keep them <laughs> running uh, running games for us. Oh man, it's I love I miss DMing. I I had a great game when I was in Calgary, and then two of the people got divorced, and then I moved, and it all went to shit. Mm -hmm. and I was just devastated because it was such a fun game. What's mm -hmm. it? A, group oh, brutal. It's yeah. the fucking worst. Like, and I have one group that we play semi regularly, but like one of us is a parent and lives in Texas. The rest of us have like full time jobs, and it's like, ah, I know. God, I miss like just having a regular, regular game. You know, even just a like we're running a four, 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 five, five man one now, which is trying to get five people to sit down at the same time. Oh, there's your mistake so awesome. though. Fuck that. Four people is the perfect D and D party. Yeah. Or Pathfinder, or whatever. Four is the perfect number. Four? Are we? Five, including me? Is that the? Well, the, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, so you're the DM? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's. Oh, I thought, I thought <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh I thought this. you meant like six, like a five person party. Oh no, and no, And then no. a six. Oh no, no, no. no. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, that's yeah. chaos. It's just yeah, nothing gets done. Fuck that noise. And the action economy is garbage. The what? The action economy is all shit. Like yeah. you can't get like a good monster in there. Sorry, we're no, going real no, deep into DM right. talk. No, we have to go deeper. Well, if you want to go back to the radio bit, do you want to do a break from morning radio? Because I have a soundboard here. Did it work? Did it, no, it didn't go. With like fart it, sound? Like yeah. morning zoo? Oh, there we go. oh wow. I've never done a show in my life where I had drops. Here, here's the fart. You should see that, a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Kelly's farts sound like. He was very confused. There you go. There's the fart. I, I've never done a show with... I've never done a show with music beds, and I've never done a show mm. with drops. Music beds? Yeah, where you'll be like, hey, it's 104 Live, where's your radio? It's a song. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then the other part would just be like, it's like 92.2, the bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah gotcha. <laughs> wait, wait, do that again. 92.4. <laughs> the fart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Should we do it? We, we can do more takes. We'll just, we just do takes all day, you know? 
<laughs> hey, you're listening to 92.5, the wet one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was okay. Shout out to this this guy who is a producer at a radio station in Toronto. He would film himself every time he saw a new gas station, uh, or like he saw a gas station price, and he'd like make it a small town Ontario radio station. Oh, oh nice! So, That's so he like walked by. He's like ninety two five Jazz FM Barry's home for soft riffs. <laughs> <laughs> It was brilliant. I wish I could like credit the guy proper, but yeah, like find if you ever look up like small town radio gas prices, it's perfect. It's brilliant. Nice. Um, so <laughs> Kelly's looking at me pointedly. Um, so we are we were hoping to do a segment that we haven't tried yet before. It's called Question Jar. Oh uh, yeah, let's do it. We should grab that jar. We, cool. we don't have a musical cue for question jar, but wait, no, yeah, we do. Are you ready? It's a fart. Yeah, it's a fart. <laughs> so, so small so so delayed <laughs> all right that was the, the best way to do it all right question jar so here i'll take that big stack out of there so here's the idea that we had with the question jar you can hold on to that was there's a there's a series of one person at a time okay um there's a series of preset questions in there uh there's i think like 11 questions in there and there are all you kinds keep of things. Cinnamon candy? Probably. Did you keep cinnamon candy in here? I keep a lot of things in jars. It smells like um, spicy Tim Tams. I want to. Yeah, smell the question jar. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, heart candies. Ooh, yeah. spicy heart candies. Okay, okay wait. The, the new the new segment is called Guess the Smell. <laughs> smell my jar. That's well, the that question. Does. Is what was in this jar beforehand? What was in this jar beforehand? I think it was cinnamon hearts. I yeah. think cinnamon hearts. I yeah. don't remember owning cinnamon hearts. So there's, a, there's questions in this jar. <laughs> you can pull out as many or as few as you want. If you pull out a question, you have to answer it. But for every question that you do answer, then you can write a new question on here and add it to the jar. The jar will grow over time. Okay, cool. Well, I don't want to read someone. Well, I think, I think another them. person should pick the question and then ask it. Oh, if only it's somebody here whose job was to orchestrate like games. Ugh. There we go. <laughs> My first radio rodeo. Hey, my first radio. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, every time he goes on, hate my first radio. Uh, uh, what is your favorite joke? Oh, you know what? That's actually really easy. Um, Joe Jack Handy. Jack Handy. Is that oh. that's that's a move I taught Pat and did? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so Jack Handy was this. Uh, he was this comic that was on SNL for years. Um, and his thing was like the one-liner, like the one-liner joke, like the Mitch Hedberg, mm -hmm. Anthony Jeselnik before those guys were comics. And so Jack Handy had this segment called the deep thoughts of Jack Handy that would just play into a commercial. It was amazing. Um, and he, I don't know if this is one that was from one of his deep thoughts or if it was just something he was doing in a stand-up set, but it always absolutely killed me. Um, if I ever fall off a really tall tower, I'm going to put my arms and legs to my side really tight like a mannequin. Because then someone's going to reach out and catch me because, hey, free mannequin. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty fucking good. <laughs> it's, okay, they're, they're like, and they're all in that kind of style, right? There's, yeah. um, there's another one... Uh, uh, when I was a little boy, my parents used to leave my siblings and I with our caveman uncle. Then one day he ate one of us. Later we found out he was a bear. <laughs> <laughs> it's like touching on anti jokes. It's, it, it's, it's very Norm MacDonald before Norm MacDonald. It right? reminds me of, uh, there, there used to be this really awesome, like, underground comedy show in Edmonton called uh, Dr. Jokes. Oh, and... I remember Dr. Jokes! Yeah, you've been there? Oh, years ago, like, yeah. before I moved, before I moved away. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. so there was this one guy there, and, like, I was less familiar with comedy at the time, so I didn't realize at the time he was kind of just really ripping off Mitch Hedberg's stick. Yeah, yeah. But it was like, whoa, this dude is so weird, I love it. And he had this joke that I still remember, and he was like, yeah, I found out my imaginary friend was talking about me behind my back. A real friend wouldn't do that. 
That's, that's just a Mitch Hedberg joke, though. That's like, I'm pretty sure that's just a Mitch Hedberg joke. I, I wouldn't put it past him. I don't know. But there you go. You answered the question. Oh, man. Yeah. Jack Handy was great. Or uh, I, I always care and carry around two sacks. That way, no one will ever ask me to move because I can't go, go, hey, I'm sorry. I got two sacks. That's it. That's just. <laughs> That's it. My hands are full. I got two sacks. I heard I heard a really dumb good one the other day too. Um, why why do gnomes giggle when they frolic through a field? Ah, I know this one. Gnomes giggle because the grass tickles their balls. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I, I, mean, I don't know. I love I mean, that. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty... I'm just, like imagining a bunch of like. <laughs> oh boy, I just love I just love barley. <laughs> the texture of the barley is the best. I like that your gnome voice was the same as your radio guy voice. That's great. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good it's a good one for lots of characters. I mean, I always think of gnomes and I always almost want to go like, hey, fuck you. Yeah, I'm, I'm walking here. What do you want from me? Yeah, I'm a Sullivan one. I came from the underdark. Oh, no, look at me. I haven't seen the sun. What, you going to fucking judge? Fuck you. Who are you fucking looking at? Tall piece of shit. I hope that's your character's voice. <laughs> Man, I don't know if gnomes should sound like that, or they should be from Jersey, because like that's also very good. <laughs> hey, what the fuck? I'm walking here. Hey, look, look down. Why don't you watch your knees? You're going to hit me in the eye. What's the deal? Why do I have, to, I have to wear a fucking helmet just to come walk here? Fuck you. Fuck you. You want me to dance like this, huh? You think it's cute? Huh? Or you want me to build you a new crossbow? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Come back when you have money, you yeah. fucking chump. I want to participate in this bit so bad, but Josh is losing his mind in the in the show chat here. And um, yeah, so I feel like we should put the ball in your court because we are past the one hour mark, which is going to usually pivot to the game. So if you want to get that role playing in, we can switch or you could answer another question or we could we could just jump right back into that dumb bit. I mean... I'm hands I off feel the like wheel. Bitch, you, <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker! Baby. But one of my favorite DMs, for whatever reason, when he when we cast speak with plants, it's always from Boston. Yeah, nice. And he always nice. loves Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> it's this, it's so dumb. It's so immersion breaking. Don't give a shit. It's always funny. I I firmly believe that the best way to uh, to play role playing is to do it like wrong. Um, weirdly, I don't ever get invited back to sessions that would I like, you know, play with people. You know what? Including no, the fuck. session I did with him. No, fuck, fuck you. There's no way. This is my favorite thing about role playing games is that there's there isn't a right way to do it. Like if if you want to critical roll it and act out everything and do these intense voices and character things, awesome. If mm -hmm. you want to have an ongoing bit about how you you can't get close to tieflings because they make your bits burn because you're a secretly a demon baby you go nuts too who gives a shit it doesn't matter it's a fucking game if you're having fun you're doing it right yeah. let me tell you when we were putting this show together and we got a lot of like advice or we got input specifically from kind of a focus group of like really like tabletop community people um there are according to them there are ways you absolutely have to do role playing like people are like you're gonna role play for an hour that's not long enough that is like the biggest thing. What? No, repeatedly. That, that, look at look at <laughs> look at look at um. Did you ever watch Charming Town when it was running? I never heard. Oh of yeah, it. fucking yeah. Hard. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So like, in hard... no way have I ripped off any ideas from that. <laughs> yeah. I was actually gonna say, I was like, wait a second, I know this format. <laughs> Son of a bitch, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I've, I've been had. <laughs> Like there, there was none of those stories made sense. No, and they're, they're like just super condensed, like. And, like, like yeah, and I still and I still can't put a shambling mound onto a battle map without oh, calling it a Gary yeah. shambling. Yeah, like I can't. I love shambling, man. It's so good. Oh, such a, he's such a dick. I love shambling. Oh man, great! If you've never seen Harmontown, none of this makes sense. Mm. <laughs> I've yeah, uh, I mean, I've seen episodes that Charlie has force fed yeah. me in order yeah. to show me what he uh, had in mind for the show. But no, this is dope. This is awesome. Yeah, but we have a soundboard, you know. Why is that one not going? I really wanted there to be another fart. The little, the little one. The little, the little one. Hothy <laughs> <laughs> one, like. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 
You're going to Matt Mercer these sound effects? Just make them really gross yes. and wet? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hate that. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> that you. Are, are, we do, are we doing the mouth noises thing again? Oh, yeah, we did this before. Yeah, we've done this. Oh, like, no, I, we're back into the same bit. I know, Fuck. I know. Yeah. Damn it. I'm really trying to do these bits. We should really pivot. <laughs> you got to be more aggressive. This is your game. Oh, you want, oh yeah. Let's, sure, let's do it. It seems like we, we're kind of doing it already. Well, I mean, we've already started. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'm going to get my phone because that's yeah. where I had like the parts of my character sheet because I don't... I don't you, can, you can write on a physical one if you want. Can I? Oh, that'd yeah, be a dream. I have mine. That's Skeeter. And while we're handing this out, uh, Nicole is going to do a radio-style break. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening to our show here on 92 Toadfather FM. Hey, thank you for tuning in to CKUA, where we play all kinds of different music you haven't been hearing all day, and it's extremely good. CKUA, the radio station that all other radio stations should aspire to be. You need more mouth, you need more like mouth sound. Like, yeah, you got to get a little, not quite NPR levels, but like, um, just dry out um, your mouth and get like, welcome to um, Alberta today on the CKUA radio. I'm uh, here. i uh, really excited to bring you a brand new record from, um, from a, uh, from a, from a creator, from a drum heller. You don't, uh, you don't see him very often because he's often out um, plowing fields in his uh, rural background. He uh, likes to have the spirit of rural life into his music. And uh, here he is today. Um, yeah, the whole idea was for <laughs> us to do bits while you fill out your character Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, got, hey. I got distracted. Actually, fun fact, I was in high school, our high school Christmas concert, because uh, I was in choir and band, because, uh, oh boy, very cool. Um, one was called Christmas on the Radio. And we had to like this whole setup was like you would sing the choir would sing a song and then like someone dropped down and be like, Hey, it's this person on this radio station. Here's the next Christmas song. And I had to do one where I was uh where I was CKUA. Uh, and I'd be like, Here and here's a Christmas on the snow on CKUA radio. Uh and they actually got a person who I now work with to come to be like, Oh yeah, I'm a real person from the radio doing this Christmas concert. Here's this radio station. And uh, I work with her now, and it's very funny. Oh, cool! Um, it's a good story. I just can't encourage it. You, you gotta, you gotta fill it. Okay, I'll fill it here. here. I'll put more, <laughs> put more dice down. I can go mute your mic if that'll help. All jokes aside, I uh, live for the mid morning mojo with Bubba. He's uh, my favorite. Bubba's, Bubba's curves. I love the music he plays. I love his voice. Just as like the perfect amount of like soothing for the morning. It's like, whew, gets me, gets me good. I was, uh, I was reading about like way back when Sonic was a new station and they were like out of a trailer in Niskew. And, uh, at one point, one of their, um, one of the DJs at the time was bored and they're like, I'm going to play our music library in alphabetical order. And I'm just like, that, that could be what radio is. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, when you put that kind of stuff to ratings, it always goes badly. Well, people gotta have better taste. That's the thing. Yeah, they really people could. should stop Absolutely. enjoying like there are people who are like, Oh yeah, I listen to one station all day eight hours straight at work and I'm like How? He's full no, he's full of shit. You should absolutely do that and only on one radio station <laughs> I, I work for. Um, please help me feed my dog. See, if you wanted that bit to work, you should have brought your dog. It would have been more convincing. Oh man, I could have held her up and she would look all awkward and gangly. Ah, my dog's the best. She's great. Mm. This is going to be our new grassroots campaign: is to get people <laughs> to call into Chuck ninety two five and like just exclusively request like the back catalog from artists. Uh, we actually were running a contest right now. We're like naming the radio station after someone. I, I did hear that. I did listen today because I do my research, and uh, <laughs> I was like, "Oh man, maybe he can rig this contest for me." Uh, so we we had one person call in that they only wanted to hear "Men at Work." And I was like, I've never heard someone whose favorite band is Men at Work, and I really appreciate this weird, weird, weird flex. And it was great. It was super fun. We added like 10 new Men at Work songs that we never play. It was great. It was a fun day. How do I enter this contest? Well, check it out at Just go register, get yourself all set up, and good to go. I'm literally have your website still open. Hey, there's you. Hey, it's me. Uh, that was me like 40 pounds ago. <laughs> Holy fuck. <Ooh. laughs> I got... 
really here actually here while i'm filling this out quick side story because i know i've made like a couple jokes of like about my weight um you know what let's just put all your stats at minus one and then it's ready cool cool uh hang on i'm gonna make no 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 because a couple of these i'll be good at okay there's no fourth stat unless we're adding it ask asking him oh yeah okay so i'm going to make so i got four points content Got four points, so I'm gonna do yeah. um three of them into here. So let me make you a two. Do you want to know what we're good at or a mystery? No, nah, don't fuck that. Who cares? Okay. Three will go there. I'm gonna play. And then one will go here because I have little hands. You can also drop one lower if you want. I did that. Is it? Okay. If you want. You want to be bad at something. All right. I got plus one to body and plus two to my psyche. And minus two to my understanding. Hands. Hands. Um, oh, yeah. So, weight thing. Um, so, like, I used to weigh, like, 280, 290 pounds. Um, and then I went on this, like, crazy, really unhealthy fitness thing where I lost, like, 80 in the span of six months. And everyone was like, wow, good for you. Look at how good you are. Working out, being awesome. And I'm like, I starve myself. And I only work out and get my calories from liquor. <laughs> um, and then I got sober and started to eat my feelings instead of drinking them. Mm. Then the pandemic happened. It was just like, bloop, 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 bloop. Mm. Um, and that's okay because bodies change and humans change, and I'm not going to be shooting myself because I do that a lot. Um, Have you considered channeling those feelings into atrocious bits and detached irony? <sighs> you know I like broadcast for a living, right? Yeah. <laughs>